Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. A lot of people are saying that PFP projects are a thing of the past. They're on their dying breath. However, I could not disagree anymore. In fact, I think there are going to be lots of blue chip projects from 2023 and beyond. In fact, I definitely think that in 2030, even then, things are going to be coming up that will be PFP projects and they'll still find their success. So today we're going to discuss the current state of PFPs. And if you're not familiar with that is profile picture projects or profile pictures, depending how you want to break that down and why I believe they're just warming up now. So we have been seeing things like NFTs without utility are dead, and that's a thing of the past. Also, we've been saying PFPs or profile pictures, these generative art projects, especially with these animals, are just fading away. And going forward, we're not going to see any of those anymore because this market is maturing. As we see, lots of projects are launching right now, and of course, they're not selling out. However, I don't think that is an indication of what's to come. Also, they're saying there's too many founders in the space, and there's just not enough collectors or buyers, and there's also all sorts of short-sighted analysis going on. And trust me, don't get me wrong, I've said some of this stuff too as well, because generally speaking, what I'm speaking about right now today, but the bigger picture, I would never say something like PFPs and profile picture projects are absolutely dead and going forward is not going to happen. However, I might say something like there are too many being launched right now that are pretty much the same. See, there's different strokes for different folks. If you've ever heard that saying, which basically just means that there's different things for different people. No two people have the same exact needs and wants, and it doesn't matter exactly how identical they might look on the outside. On the inside, their interests, their desires, their motivations, and things that they appreciate and value are very different. So that's where that really, that saying comes from. And just giving a broad example of different cultures, even within the U.S. where the majority of the listeners for this podcast come from, if you look at New York City and Bentonville, Arkansas, those cultures could not be any further apart. And I use, I use Bentonville simply because that is the headquarters of Walmart, if you're not familiar. But I saw a documentary on Sam Walton, who was the founder of Walmart, the richest man in the world at the time when Walmart IPO'd and was just really sitting on the top of the world. And he drove around in a old pickup truck with his two hounds. So that could not be anything further from the whole Wall Street image of New York City. That is the same country with two very different cultures. So just think of it this way. Fast forwarding 50 years, nothing really has changed that much. Here in this whole NFT space, we're talking about, let's say, using high estimates, we're saying a million people are actively in the space right now globally out of the seven plus billion people on the planet. But that is covered nearly 200 countries and probably thousands of different cultures, maybe even more. And we're talking about just all of that fitting into a very small number of people that are currently in Web3 and particularly in NFTs and collecting PFPs or these profile pictures. It is a very small number of people. However, if you notice that there is a lot of copy and pasting, some cookie cutter culture is going on right now because you see, obviously, a lot of apes, a lot of punks, a lot of animals, and not just even in the artwork and how these projects are structured with their roadmap and their utility or so-called utility, their different plans, the charities that they're giving to. But if you even hop into some of these spaces or look at the tweets, it seems like an echo culture, almost like the entire NFT community is on one page. Really? Yeah, sure. You have, I would say, two sectors. You have the crypto bros who like to meme things and are much more crude and it seems like a frat house. But then on the other side, it's like pretty much it's like a kumbaya campfire meeting with everyone's holding hands and supportive and all that stuff. And it is a completely different vibes as the two sides. But even in that, I would say that it is pretty uniform once you go into those two camps as to what's going going on from project to project, and it is a very similar feel and vibe. And a lot of people are copying the success from one project to another because obviously you want to build on the shoulders of giants. And in this space, people even take that to the extreme and straight up outright copy. They just mimic and repeat everything that they saw success with and hope for the best in this time. And with everything within this whole transparent model of things and everything being done in public, we're having basically building founders meetings and all sorts of things that are out there on Twitter spaces, meeting with communities. So anyone can just hop in, start to listen, see what's going on. And quickly, you see that the culture that is being formed in this space of, let's say, one million people, which is a nice sized city, 
is really is trying to have a uniform tone and model. And that is not how the world works. And you look at 200 plus countries and thousands of different cultures, someone is getting left out right now. But here's the thing. Even coming out of the whole COVID lockdowns and everything, we were in a space where everyone just wanted to be loved and hugged. And it really is human nature to fit in. First of all, it is survival instinct and not even just human nature. Let's say an albino lizard or some other animal that's out there. You know, if it stands out, it can't camouflage, blend into the grass and all those different things. What's going to happen? Bird's going to eat it. It's not going to survive. So blending in, looking like everyone else or the background and surrounding, it is a part of survival instinct. And this is not just the case for individuals. There's always been safety in numbers. Animals for the most part, stick to groups. There's very few like animals and species that they roam around solo, but the vast majority of them stick to some sort of group or a pod or a school of fish or a herd or a pack of wolves. You name it, social animals and their safety in numbers, whether it is they need the numbers to hunt down bigger game and accomplish bigger goals and things, or just for the simple fact that they want to band together and fight against their particular enemies, a bunch of gazelle together stand a better chance against a lion than a lone gazelle all by itself. Things like that. So with that said, going back to human nature and coming into this whole space, people really don't want to stand out. They don't want to ruffle the wrong feathers, especially coming out of that horrible political climate that we see during election election years, especially over the last, uh, I would say, 12 years or so, the last three or four election cycles. It has been very polarizing, especially in the United States. And that's when you start to see a lot of people that were pretending to be one thing as far as how they felt about certain things and they're voting certain ways in secrecy. It's because no one really wants to stand out. However, going back to this whole thing, people that are not represented, they don't feel like they have their voice. They might feel left out. That is why I truly believe that these PFP projects, these profile picture projects that are really a representation of these individuals are nothing that is going away anytime soon because there's so many cultures, so many groups that are left out. They're not represented. And I'm not talking about races or sexuality or skin tones or anything of that nature. No, that is not what I'm talking about because at the end of the day, I truly, in my heart of hearts, believe that we are all one people. You know, uh, being in Jamaica, we're out of many one people. Like, you know, we are one. But what I'm truly saying is say cultures. For example, if you just look through history, I mean, I could give countless negative examples of groups that either they felt left out or like the world was against them or whatever it is and they fought, uh, they form these groups or gangs or organizations and they've started revolutions and in many cases even wars world wars so there's a lot of negative examples but i want to give a positive example and let's talk about the hip hop culture for example the hip hop culture is really birthed out of the youth just frustration of all the things that were going on in the climate whether it be economically injustices and all sorts of different things and the youth took it upon themselves that they didn't want to go out there and march like their parents did and got nothing done, had dogs set on them and so forth, what they did is they put it into these angry lyrics to a beat and so forth. And that was where hip hop culture was really birthed out of expressing themselves and putting that stuff, that poetry, their feelings, their raw emotions, especially once you got to the 90s with the West Coast, like gangster rap, when they're talking about all the police brutality and everything that was going on in L.A. And all of that came out in the music itself. And it was very polarizing. Like some people were so uncomfortable with it. They were breaking CDs and they were trying to get them banned from stores and there were protests and rallies. But guess what? Like that genre, that group, they felt like they were being spoken to. They resonate, it resonated with them and they supported that message and they were all in with that. And of course, hip hop is uh, where it is now. Well, I shouldn't say where it is now because I would like to say, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this generation of hip hop, but that's another story and stuff. Just showing myself as a, an old man at the ripe old age of 35. But anyways, so going back to this whole thing, of course, Web3, PFP projects, people being represented. That is really the heart of this thing because for these generative projects, for the most part, they have these different traits that really appeal to people and there's different projects, but there's so many, as I said, there's derivative projects and just copy and paste, especially with all this creative common stuff now and all these IP rights that are being shared around and all this stuff and uh, not creative commons, but you know what I mean? They, they uh, creative zero and all the stuff that they're talking about now where everything is just being shared up and split up. So it's even more so than ever before that these traits and things are looking like cookie cutters. How many derivatives and different iterations of the same sorts of traits can we possibly have. So going down the line, I expect projects to launch that have some crazy, 
out there uh, utility for a group of people that they just felt like, you know what, in all these Twitter spaces and tweets and everything, I could never really be myself. Sure, it was nice to be around a lot of people that were speaking about NFTs because that was really where I found my home because we were only one of a million people. And having that voice, having those conversations on Twitter, that was my community. However, as another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million people come into this space, just being here for the NFTs and having those conversations that you can't have offline, that is not enough anymore. Now, you want to have those conversations with people that also have the same struggles that you have. The people that have views on certain things that you might feel like is not being represented amongst those people now that were in the space for the technology. Hopping around the world is really quick. Africa is going through all sorts of economical turmoil and different things like that. And that's nothing new. But there is a youth, a group, and going to the whole music thing, Afrobeats. Just imagine like all the culture and things that is being expressed in Afrobeats music. If that ends up into PFP projects and profiles that are representative of those people, or even if you go over to Asia, all right, there's some crazy stuff that is happening right now with Taiwan and Hong Kong, especially how they're dealing with China. So those youth right there, I I can definitely see them rising up and having a culture that forms out of that and having a profile picture that really represents what they're going through at that moment is really no different than seeing 90s hip hop. That is no different than seeing whatever punk rock movement that went through Seattle and grunge. I could go through just countless music genres that really birthed out of a type of uh, struggle or uh, a climate that was going through that time and the youth really rose up and have formed an identity around it rock and roll of course in the 60s and so forth but going back to this whole space i see this whole thing as like just an expressive medium as far as these profile pictures and they represent what is going on whether it is the dreadlocks of rastas or the spiked hair of the punks it is the afros of the black and proud people. I mean, there's so many different things that you could possibly go through to really identify and say, you know what, this is something that's very interesting that I would like to see in the art. And these are the type of people that I would like to speak about these issues that I'm having right now, because I know that they will understand. And that is where I'm going to find my communities. And now it's just great because there's nobody here. And it's really the community. Everything that we have in common happens to be the tech. The fact that we are collecting these NFTs, we're having PFPs. And yeah, sure, there's the money aspect of trading right now, but there's so many people that have forever PFPs and these forever PFPs are something that they have no intention of really selling. They don't even check the floor price. They don't care. They just want to rock out and vibe with that community because it, they speak about the same things. They have a same frequency. The message resonates with them and they want to go out there and identify themselves as such and recruit. And that is no different than anything we've ever seen, whether it is uh, people going out in uniforms or um, wearing certain colors for organizations and uh, so forth. They want to really just identify as being such veterans, gang members. I mean, you name it, uh, both on the positive and the negative spectrum of the, the whole grand scheme of things. And this is just a great way easily identify this is what I'm about this is what I'm rocking with and that's why I see no end in this PFP profile picture art whatever you want to call it movement and I think we're just warming up I really do it's just right now more projects are launching than there are new people coming in and as I said eventually as more people come into the space it's not just good enough anymore to say yeah we are the NFT people we are the quote unquote DJs although I don't consider myself to be a DJ but so that is not going to be enough anymore and then there's going to be all these different pockets and that is where people are going to find their voice. And it might be their only NFT, but hey, that is enough. They can find their people. They can find whatever it is and they can end up working with whatever it might be. And maybe they'll find their business contacts, their best friends. I mean, this is no different than what we saw with people that were finding their communities and Facebook groups and so forth. This is just the next evolution of that. And we're doing this through profile picture projects. And I could go on and on to speak about these different groups that are just not represented and so forth. And even a whole generation, Generation X, right? That is like the overlooked forgotten generation. I know they have the silent generation of the pre-World War II crowd, but this is like the new silent generation. Everything is about the boomers and the millennials, but then like Gen X is in the middle, just like forgotten. And it's pretty crazy.
So who knows? There might be a Gen X PFP project launching by the end of this month. Who knows? I don't know. I just would not be surprised to see anything that picks up steam because it's just not represented and those people really find what they're looking for. So I would love to know, have you found your forever PFP and that community that are those traits that really resonate with you and represent what you're all about? If you have, I would love to see what it is. Please feel free to share it with me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. And if not, I'd love to know, what are you looking for? Maybe I know of a project that might have some interesting traits and I'm looking at this stuff all the time, so might as well put it to good use. Feel free to reach out to me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. As usual, I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.